due to some remarkable highs and relatively disappointing lows, the Mazda CX-30 is a stellar SUV that will be rejected by many. Stick around and I'll explain what I mean and the changes for 2023. For the new model year, there will be five more horsepower on the base engine. And that engine actually gains two miles per gallon across the board in its EPA rating due to an updated cylinder deactivation system that is now standard on all naturally aspirated engines. And because of the tactical elimination of sneaky deals in the automotive industry, Mazda subtly removed the base turbo trim. This is priced competitively nonetheless, but you're spending at least 35 grand to get boost now. The CX-30 also received updates to help it better meet the new safety standards set by the IIHS. Things that include rear side airbags and more shin padding. And that's it for changes for 2023. So let's get into the meat of this video. But before we do that, if you enjoy fun, detailed car content without fluff, consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications. So the first reason I think that the CX-30 stands out from the crowd is the powertrains. So you'll have a choice of a turbo or naturally aspirated version of the same 2.5 liter direct injected dual overhead cam in line four. It'll make 191 horsepower now in the base form, 250 on premium with the turbo. But the more important aspect is the torque. Seriously, this thing makes more torque than most three row crossovers in small trucks. And it weighs like 3,400 pounds. Due to that, this thing scoots. On regular gasoline, I got zero to 60 in about 6.2 seconds. But it's not just the thrust, it's how it goes about it. So the transmission, a six-speed automatic, shifts comically slow, but it's buttery smooth with the turbo engine, making for probably the, not probably, definitely the most refined powertrain that you can buy in this class. It's not a drag queen or um, it doesn't have racy performance, but it has phenomenal passing power with throttle response that almost makes you forget that it's forced induction due to its dynamic pressure turbo system that I talk about more in my full review I'll have linked below. And if you're looking for a great buying experience with your next Mazda, consider Royal South Mazda in Bloomington, Indiana, the friendly small town store that has let me test drive various CX-30s over the years that helps make video like this possible. Now with the standard 2.5 liter, I think the transmission's tuning isn't as good. So sometimes it makes a wrong decision. It feels like it gear hunts just a little bit, especially when you're at lower speeds. But even that engine packs more grunt than what a lot of the competition has, period. Another thing that most of the competition lacks is standard all wheel drive. Something that this also does quite well. It comes standard with an off-road traction mode that actually does a pretty good job at diverting power side to side with its open diffs in the front and rear. Yes, it is not a true full-time system like the Subaru and I would give the rugged edge to the Crosstrek due to that and a little bit extra ground clearance. After seeing what this could do with a driving sports TV test among other videos, this is a good system, and it comes with Mazda's G-vectoring control, which kind of plays with the throttle to help make the steering even more predictable than it already was. And that's going to lead me to my next reason to pick up one of these, the handling. The best part about it is just how natural the steering is. I repeat this about Mazda's all the time, and it's because it feels so predictable. It doesn't have a very quick steering ratio, so it doesn't come off darty or sports car-like. It's just very refined. And then there's a little bit of feedback thrown through the steering wheel as well to make you feel a part of the experience. Body roll is also pretty well kept due to a firmer ride, something that some people will also not like. And it also does have a little bit more heft behind the steering wheel. So if you're looking for the easiest car to drive in the class or the best on a bad road, this is not exactly that. And also it doesn't have independent rear suspension. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Still, if they had to cost cut in a few measures to give us this nice of an interior, I'm okay with that. So that's the next reason. The borderline obsessive use of soft touch materials makes this thing feel a class above and you have nice tactile feeling analog controls it's a straightforward interior, reminding me of now Audi's previous design language. And it's still not short on features. You can get things like a heads-up display on the premium trim model, a 360-view camera on the top premium plus turbo. Even on the base, you still have soft touch for where your knees rest. 
and with the clicky control dial for the infotainment system, makes everything that you interact with feel upscale. And yes, the infotainment system does not feature the most intuitive UI, but while you're driving, the controls sit exactly where my hand rests. So it's easy and feels safer to use, in my opinion, than trying to pinpoint your finger on a bad road or something. It could just be better laid out. So that's just an example of how Mazda really paid attention to ergonomics in here. But they also paid attention to value because when it comes to features and quality for the money, this is hard to beat. This thing opens out right at $25,000. This car as it sits has a sticker price of just below 27. And you still get leatherette seats if you go with the select trim. And proximity unlock and lock as well. A lot of the competitors will make you pay 30 grand for that. Additionally, you'll have an awesome stock sound system. You don't have to pay to get you know, the best in the business, but they still offer that too. You can go with a Bose system, but you'll still have some capable eight speakers if you want to cheap out. And like I said, you have good all-wheel drive, good engines and transmissions. And actually, if you're indifferent to getting a hatchback or an SUV, uh, this is one of the hardest arguments against the Mazda 3. And my last point, is reliability. This comes with a very proven engine and transmission in the base setup and a usually reliable turbocharged engine as well, but that's also been the cause of a technical service bulletin that as of yet has not resulted in a recall. They're still working on a fix for it because several people have reported it consuming oil. But this is not something I'm seeing super consistent on other Mazda products, so do take note. If you want the most trustworthy Mazda, just stick with the base engine. Other issues that people have reported is things like weak AC, uh, there was a recall on the power lift gate. Some people also reported spastic braking from the collision avoidance system. There were also several reports of warped windshields making visibility kind of weird. But overall, Mazda's had good reliability the last five, 10 years. And with its Japanese engine and in-house built transmission, I would predict this to be pretty reliable. And yes, it does have cylinder deactivation as standard now, but I haven't really heard too many issues with it from Mazda, but that is a technology that other brands have struggled with in the past. That said, the now great gas mileage for the class should also lower running cost. Now let's talk the downsides. So first off, visibility is not great. The windows are just tiny, so the view out the side front windows doesn't exactly leave you with an approachable feeling that you'll get with something like a Honda HRV, VW Taos, Subaru Crosstrek, the list goes on. It can be off-putting because it makes the car feel cramped, but the back seat is actually kind of cramped when you consider what the rest of the segment usually has to offer. I am six foot three. I can fit in the front and back. My knees are kind of forced around the seat, but at least my head has enough room. It's not terrible, but if you have a big reverse facing car seat, uh, this may be not the best choice. But the cargo area is still actually respectable for the class. The seats up front also uh, may push off some people because the seat backs kind of like tug in at your shoulder blade. So if you're a little bit wider, like I have broader shoulders, it's a little odd. It's definitely something that I could get used to, but, but if you have wider hips than me, the kind of narrow seat there could also be a nuisance. And even though I personally like it, the user interface is a common complaint among other people. So I will mention it here. And lastly, the torsion beam rear suspension does lack the composure that you'll get with something like a Subaru Crosstrek or Toyota Corolla Cross on the worst of roads, it just adopts a more busy ride than most of its independent rear suspension competition on appalling roads. And that kind of leads me to my final thoughts. I can undoubtedly say that this is my personal favorite in the segment, outside of maybe a manual cross track because that exists. While a lot of cars can avoid being defined by their shortcomings, it's kind of tricky in the case of the CX-30 because for a lot of people, they hop in this thing, it can be off-putting if you have small windows or they have family needs and notice that the back seat just isn't as accommodating as a lot of the competition or the user interface seems foreign. This is a segment where a lot of people aren't exactly car enthusiasts or people that would really care about the driver-centric feel of the Mazda CX-30. But I've come to accept that while these things could be improved, and I think the soul of the CX-30 could remain intact, the CX-30 adds character and engagement to a class that is usually devoid of both of those things, and it does it with an upscale feel that a few others can match.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like to help me embarrass the YouTube algorithm. If you want more, subscribe and hit the bell. And thank you to my devout patrons for your support. I'll catch you in the next one.